Up next, a review of Imhotep, Imhotep, A New Dynasty, an expansion for Imhotep, Builder of Egypt. Imhotep, A New Dynasty was designed by Phil Walker Harding, which is the same designer as the original game. Features art from Miguel Coimbra, Martin Hoffman, Michaela Killing, and Klaus Steven. Produced in 2017 by Thames and Cosmos. This is another game where we've got an unboxing video up on YouTube, and you should all check that out so you can see what you get in the box. And for those of you who haven't seen it, what do you get in the A New Dynasty expansion for Imhotep? All right, one thing I want to point out, I almost should have it here for people on the stream to hold it up, is the ridiculous size of this box. It's like really long and tall and skinny. I have no idea why it's this size. It's, it's this big rectangle. It won't fit in the core box. And inside, the only thing that actually takes up the entire height is the instructions. Like, the punch boards aren't that long. I, I don't know. It's kind of like the box insert, the original Imhotep. I, I don't get it. Uh, those instructions I mentioned are eight pages long. Uh, actually, seven pages of rules, one reference sheet. Well written. They're good. They're just as good as the original. Color-coded, which is cool. Uh, we actually have Meeple in here, which is just unique because the original game didn't have Meeple in it. Uh, there's a little yellow Imhotep, and there's some chariots in the four different player colors. Now, does it fit, when you unbox it, does it fit into the original box? Yes, and you don't even have to remove the silly, weird, rectangular box insert. All so right. if they put out any more expansions, that box insert's probably got to go. <laughs> uh, next, you got punch boards. There's a bunch of punch boards. There's five of them. Most of them are the new player boards. That's a big part of this expansion. But there's a ton of little things to punch out in this expansion. Uh, like, way more than the base game. There's chits and tokens, uh, stuff for gold. Uh, scarabs, polyominoes, square numbered chits, like all kinds of stuff to punch out. So really, there's a lot more components in the game once yeah. you get this expansion. It's a very light game, generally. Yes, yeah, a ton of components. And we'll get to the, some of that in my final thoughts, because that's actually one of my few complaints about this. Uh, then we have a deck of cards. Uh, there's seven new Prophecy of the Guards cards. Gods? Guards? I don't know, guards. Prophecy of the Guards. It's when they're standing outside. They No, Prophecy of the Egyptian God cards. 14 new market cards, and then some other cards that are required for the different boards. So again, more little extra bits. If it was Prophecy of the Greek card, Greek Gods, we'd really be weird. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, that would be really odd. It's All right, well, at least at least the card stuff sounds familiar from my play of the game, from my play of the the base game. Yeah, the, the gods are new. That's that's yeah. one of the things. So what all these do is you got three new modules. This seems to be a thing with modules lately, where you don't just get a module, you get a bunch of things to choose from. And I, I it's a thing. I don't know if it's good or bad. I, I like it sometimes. Other times I'm like, I don't. In this case, it's fine. Uh, the new market cards are probably the easiest thing, so I'm going to start with those. 14 cards, mix them up with the rest. You're good to go. Uh, there's some neat new stuff in here. One of them is a cargo sled, lets you have more stones stored, which is huge in that game. Uh, the most powerful one, the one I think is the coolest and modifies the game the most, is uh, the raft, which lets you dock a boat where there's already a boat. Now, these sound handy. Can they just be left in no matter what? Even if you pull out all the other expansions, these can stay in and they don't mess the game up? Yeah, I, I, again, I would have got to that in the final thoughts. But yeah, definitely. We're... There's no, I don't see a reason to pull these out. Like, I, I'll, even if I'm not using the expansion, the rest of the expansion, I'd just toss these in the box. What's nice, they even include additional um, statues. So you don't even throw off the, the ratio of statues. Statues are a card where you collect uh, sets of to score points. So they even include those. So it's not like adding these 14 cards dilutes the deck, which is oh, nice. cool. That is nice. Uh, Prophecy of the Gods card. This adds a betting element to the game. Start of the game, you've put three cards in play. Each list some kind of requirement, and it's usually based on having something. So like the Prophecy of Ra, a player has to have at least four ornaments, which are the green cards. Uh, another example is Prophecy of Isis requires a player to have the most stone out of any player in the temple board. Now, on your turn now, you can spend one of two Scarab tokens you get to bet on these prophecies, saying, I'm going to have the most green cards, or I'm going to have the most stone in the temple. What's neat is if you're right, you get points at the end of the game, but if you're wrong, you lose points. Does sound uh, like a risky proposition. <laughs> uh, the final part is the new, is the biggest part is new boards. So there's five boards in Imhotep that are A and B sided. This gives you five replacement boards, five more boards, also two sided C and D. Um, now, I don't want to go over what all the sides of the pie do, boards do, because that would take a long time, and you can find out. And it's a bit much for this podcast, but I will highlight two of them just to kind of show you the differences. So the C side of the market is now known as the luxury market. It has the four market cards as usual, but there's symbols for gold in between each set of two cards. 
And that's to remind you, because at the start of the game, every player gets two gold coins, and two times during the game when they go to the market, they can spend one of the coins to take two adjacent cards instead of one. Is that adjacent in both directions, or just... Just not diagonally. Okay. So two next to each other, I, okay. I'm on yeah, podcast, yeah. so I can't show people. But yeah, it's not orthogonally. diagonally. Yes, orthogonally adjacent tiles. Uh, another one that I like is the D side of the pyramid. This one's called the corridor. This has a bunch of numbered squares and a ring that are victory points. You put a cube on them. You place the Imhotep meeple on the first square. And the neat part here is you always place your stone on the next path past Imhotep. But any time someone goes to the quarry, they have the option to jump the Imhotep ahead to the start of the pile. So I thought that was really neat because now there's a reason to go to the quarry besides just getting more stone. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it, it sort of expands that, uh, that function and uh, yeah. makes it a little more powerful than just... I need to refill so I can do something. Exactly. Yeah, it makes it a little more interesting. It, gives you, it might give you a reason to go, even when your sled's full, right? Like, I like that. Um, I describe a few more of the boards over on the full review on the blog, but I'm going to leave some players, some of them for players to discover on their own. So even if you read this, and listen to this, and go to the blog, you won't get all of them. What's worth noting, though, and I think this is really impressive, is with these boards, there are now 10 or 1,028 possible board combinations you can play with Imhotep, which is so... that that's crazy so you got an expansion but you've definitely got a lot of uh game pl replayability out of it oh yeah like like this this may be sean gilgore's except this is an expansion sean gilgore's question was a base game yeah that's this is pretty cool it's, 10 you, you may have an expansion nuts. but man do you get a lot of replay yeah. out of that one expansion what sounds fun is someone on, on board game geek has listed them all off and is crossing them off as they play them so no oh, wow. game of imitap for them will ever be the same right because when are well, they gonna unless play they play a thousand and twenty nine of them and then they're yes, out of luck I, <laughs> By then, they're out of luck. By then, maybe they'll put out another expansion. I don't know. It's cool. Uh, now, having played this, I played it a number of times with New Dynasty. I dig it overall. I, overall, it's good. But let's look at each part. Sean already mentioned this. We talked about it, basically. But the market cards, they're great. They add some interesting new twists. Uh, just throw them in. Use them every game. I'm going to use these every time. Now, Prophecy of the Gods, I feel a little different. To me, this is the weakest part of this expansion. Though I actually thought they were kind of neat and interesting. They reminded me a bit of Ticket to Ride. I had a lot of fun betting early because if you bet early, you have you the, the points are more. You either gain more or lose more, whereas you can bet later in the game and get less. I thought it was neat, but I played with a couple people that really disliked it. So in this case, I think this module is going to depend on your group. Like, try it out once with them. See if they like them. But even if the players don't, toss it back in the box so what, you lose seven cards. Based out of everything you get in this expansion, it doesn't even feel like you're losing out or anything. Now, when you say to uh, take to write, is this something that uh, each individual person gets a card to bet on, or are they set up at the no. top and everyone gets to bet on or choose? Who, everyone who bets gets on to them? bet on. Them. Yeah, everyone gets to bet on. Them. So there's three cards, and what it is, there's three levels at each. So if you bet in turn one or two, it's worth this many points. If you bet in turn three or four, it's worth this many points. If you bet in turn five or six, it's worth this many points. And multiple people can even bet on the same thing. So it's not like you're taking a spot. Oh, okay. See, so, yeah. See, now that sounds less interesting to me. My first, when, I, when you first described it, my thought was you put up some cards at the beginning of the game, you look at the setup of the boards, and you bet, or you don't. The fact no. that you can keep betting throughout the rest of the game yeah. takes the interest away from me. Well, uh, you get you get the bet twice. You get two scarabs you can use. I, I think it would be interesting if you had to look at the boards, make your decision before you started, Yeah. and then you I know, know, the either bet or don't. The interesting thing here is... You get almost nothing if you bet at the end. So, like, right. by the time you're in turn six, you're like, well, I'm going to have the most stone in the pyramid because I've got the most stone in the pyramid. Ooh, you got two points out of it. Meanwhile, right. me, who predicted it at the beginning, is like, I got seven points because I knew I was going to have the most stone somewhere. Right. I don't know. It's take it or leave it. Sounds like you'd be on the leave it side. Yeah. I liked them. I thought they were neat. I, 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 but I didn't think they were cool enough that I'm going to ask, like, no, no, I want to have them in. I don't care. I'll play with them or without. So that leaves the biggest part, the new boards. This is obviously the main reason to pick up this expansion, in my opinion. Uh, overall, I dig them. The thing, though, is these are definitely meant for experienced players. While none of them, I would say, are hard to understand how they work or the mechanics, but every single one of them is definitely more complicated than the A and B side cards in the base game. Now, this is true not only in how you set up the boards and how they work, but also the strategy and tactics required. Like, I, I would... and. I would say that you like never break this out with new players. The other thing that I think is a bit of a problem is I would consider many of these boards to be what I call fiddly. As, as Sean noted, the base game doesn't have much in it, right? There's stones, there's the, the boards, and there's some cards and boats. That's it. Like, that's all you got. 
now you got chariot meeple and polyominoes and new player cards and wooden chits and you got bingo things and you got a board you stack between some of the stuff to make scaffolding and all this stuff new dynasty just has more stuff more physical bits so it takes more time to set up it's more to track while you're playing and it's more bits to clean up now all that said i'm not saying that, that ruins it i still dig the new boards but just realize that they're like the, is there almost a next step game it's no longer the simple quick to set up, quick to teach, quick to play game. There's a little bit more involved. Stand by one sec. Sean is having problems with a UPS. It wasn't that loud on this. Place that battery soon. Or turn it off before we start recording. All right. Uh, I really got to do something about that battery. Uh, <clears throat> it reminds you every week. Yeah, I know. And it's only during the show. It doesn't go off any other time. Yeah, you go off on Thursdays where no one cares. I know, right? All right, uh, do you need me to repeat anything? or No, nah, no, nah, we're good. All uh, right. So I, what I find is, you know, the original game is simple. Uh, as Inch Games says, it's a pub game. You know, yeah. it's really quick to set up. It's really easy to play. Learning it takes no time. I mean... <laughs> You know, yeah, I played it for the first time. Deliver I've, a boat. Yeah. Here's what the different boards do. I Go. played it for the first time at uh, easy mode, and really, I mean, I, there was no teach. It was just, okay, let's just start playing, basically. Just go. Yeah. And uh, the game isn't that anymore when you add this expansion. Um, there's a lot more to work out. When you, when you put those new boards out, you've got to think about it. You've got to look at it. You've got to figure out and plan what you're going to do and how things are going to work. Because you can't just look at it and go, oh, that's that one, that's that one. Great. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I agree. So it's, it's no longer bit, a pub game. It's, it's it's not even for the physical components. You're yeah. gonna lose a polyomino, or you're gonna drop <laughs> a little chit that says twenty three on it yeah. for the one board I like to call the whatever the bingo burial chamber, because <laughs> that's it makes sense what you played yeah, in. Yeah. It's, no, I, I that's, it. <laughs> that's, that board at our table is always gonna be the bingo burial chamber. But overall, I, it's it's excellent. Um, I, it's close to, to say must-have. Uh, I'm very happy to have this in my collection. The only time I'm getting rid of this is if I get rid of Imhotep, and I don't expect that to happen soon. I personally think if you own Imhotep Builder in Egypt, I don't see a reason not to pick this up, uh, except for the fact you may not be able to afford it. But like, if you're out shopping for games and you're going to buy an expansion, you know, put this up there with Terraforming Mars and Prelude. Like, it, it's pretty much... It, it doesn't fix the game anyway. It's not a must-have, but you're not going to be disappointed. Excellent. For a more in-depth look at Imhotep, Builder of Egypt, uh, check out Mo's... Uh, sorry, that's the uh, expansion. Uh, Imhotep, A New Dynasty. Yes. Check out Mo's written review over at tabletopbellhop.com. Just click on Review.